Here's a cool project I'm working on recently. Um, this is a mini ITX computer, as you can tell by the size of my hand. It's a really small computer build. I don't exactly remember the specs of what size this case is, but it's definitely under seven liters. It's a really small volume. And then uh, obviously there's a spot for the graphics card on the other side. I haven't got the graphics card in yet, but um, this processor does have integrated graphics. So I've just been testing it out as it is right now. And that is my Pico power supply. It's a 450 watt power supply and it does have the uh, extra header right here for the graphics card. So it's got the one for the CPU, the 24 pin, and then another one for the graphics card. And um, just to test it right now, before I get my battery pack built, I'm gonna build a battery bank right here that is uh, basically out of the same battery cells that everything uses nowadays, like 18650s. Um, I think the ones I got were 21700s or something like that. But uh, they should be here this week sometime soon. And then I will basically build a uh, battery bank at the bottom of this here that is going to feed this power supply. And um, right here I have some things I 3D printed to hold the batteries, but basically it's gonna be eight cells long by two cells high. And I'm going to wire it so that it is um, four cells in series and six, uh, six um, sets of those in parallel. And I did the calculations and this little computer playing a game should last about four and a half or five hours on a single charge with those batteries. So uh, that's, that's kind of what I'm looking for. The biggest thing was is I was looking to get a laptop for school and I decided it would be easy, well, not easier, this is definitely a lot harder, but it would be a lot better if I built myself a mini portable computer. I could just chuck in my backpack with uh, battery cells in it because I don't always have a plug in the class I'm in and then have a portable monitor and Bluetooth keyboard and mouse, which is what I've got. And this will also be the setup I take on vacation with me as well. So um, that's why I mostly wanted to try it and uh, just try something different because I really, really hate buying a laptop and then replacing it three or five years later because it's so slowed down. This way I can actually have some more upgradability and um, I can use this chassis for many years to come if I feel like it or maybe I'll make something else, who knows. But um, just to test it here, I have a um, 3,300 milliamp hour four cell battery for uh, RC airplane. And uh, these are obviously 14.8 volts. That Pico power supply takes 12 volts. So um, to do that, I had one of these voltage step down um, regulator things lying around, so that takes the 14.8 volts and I have it set to like 12 and a half or 12.4 or something like that right now for the computer. But uh, I will show you uh, the, how this thing powers on and everything and I've and just for now I'm just watching the voltage of this battery with the multimeter to make sure I don't overly discharge it because I don't really feel like starting a fire today. But um, anyway, this isn't going to be the permanent solution I want to figure out if I can get power to this and video to this over one cable um, but I haven't quite figured that out yet so that's what I'm working on but I'll get it plugged in and I will turn it on okay it's all plugged in so if I press the power button on the computer power supply turns on the fan spins up and as you can see here in a second, there it goes. The computer is booting off of that battery. And obviously once I have my full um, battery set up, that will be a lot better. Call it the porta potty because why the heck not? It's portable, it's tiny. There we go. So now I'll be able to run my SOLIDWORKS programs at school 
and um, play some games on vacation if I want. Put a battery as the wallpaper because it's battery powered. I mean, as you can see, there's nothing plugged into the wall here. It is all running off of that single RC airplane battery. And I chose Intel for this one because they have a much lower idle power draw than the AMD processors. Everything else I have is AMD, or at least that's been my experience. It has a little bit better power draw at idle, but uh, let's see if I can get this multimeter on here one-handed. It's a bit like using chopsticks. There we go. So we're at 16.4 volts right now off of the battery because it's fully charged or it was fully charged. I think I started at like 16.6 or something like that, but it, it goes down slowly. I don't expect it to run this for very long being that it is a small battery. The one that I've got is going to be, the one that I'm making is going to be 24 cells. So uh, that's going to be a lot more uh, capacity and each one of those 24 cells that I'm building is 5,000 milliamp hours. Those are the cells I bought to put in this. So it should last quite a while. Might be a little on the heavy side, but it will be worth it for the battery life. But um, anyway, that's literally it. And I'm, I mean, it, I'm moving the cursor a little bit. It obviously does work. I don't have it connected to the internet, but there you go. Everything is hooked up and running perfectly. Keyboard works and this should be a pretty good setup for me. I'm excited to get those battery cells in and then I will be able to post another video of it completed. I did have to drop this platform down a little bit in order to fit the battery packs that I'm gonna be putting in there because it was mounted just a little bit higher and it's designed for a power supply to sit there but I'm obviously not doing that. So that is what I'm doing. And I'll keep you guys updated as I make another video. This is probably not um, what you're used to seeing on my channel, but this is the type of stuff I like to do in my free time. So I thought you would be interested and that's why I made a video about it.